All right, great. So now we're going to get started on another fabulous show here. Now we got Jalsberg cheese, which we're going to be working with. Incredible product here. Semi-soft, part skim, outrageous. And we're going to put it on top of our ribeye steak today. That's right, you heard it. Incredible flavor on top of our ribeye steak. We're also going to be working with Cousin Willie's today. Their buttery spread, their light, and of course their new cinnamon toast. Fabulous product. Now to get started, what we're going to do is take this uh, beef that we got from Dakota Beef, uh, totally organic, really raisin uh, product the way it should be raised. And Dakota Beef, Maya Beef, they bring us this, this incredible product here. They're a supplier of our show. Now, I don't need any other beef except this beef here. Uh, organic, they, they treat the animals right, uh, huge pastures, you know, the whole nine. This is prime rib, you know, another fancy word here, prime rib. This is, this is what it looks like. It's got a huge eye in the front here. Incredible marbling, and of course, this fat strip that runs across it like that. <clears throat> so you could take this dry rub and you could put it on top of the beef. Um, there were some Mideastern uh, chefs, friends of mine, who what they do with their beef is they take a knife and they cut it, and then they put whole pieces of garlic in the beef. They do that a lot with lamb. Um, it's pretty good technique. I want to talk a little bit about that because if you go in other parts of the world, they, they don't really prepare the beef like we do here. You know, they're more. Uh, we'll put the flavor inside the beef and cook the heck out of it till it falls apart. Um, and that's kind of the way they, they, they develop the flavor in the beef. What they'll do is they'll take the knife and they'll make incisions uh, in the beef and they'll put whole cloves of garlic in there uh, and then roast it. And then when they cut it, you get a piece of garlic. And over here in the, in the U.S. and some other uh, surrounding countries, we may say, well, what the heck are you doing stabbing a beef and letting all the juice out of the center isn't the point to sear the outside and get the juice and the flavor in the inside when you cut it. So everyone has kind of their own thinking process behind it. Um, but here in the United States, this ribeye cut is, is very popular. It's a very popular cut of beef. So I got a whole one here to show you what it looks like. So when you get it at the store, it's probably cut about like that, that much. That's a healthy, healthy portion. And they usually get about 12 to 13 cuts uh, per ribeye. Now, there's a couple of things we can do with our ribeye I'm going to show you today. Uh, one is we're going to take some of the, the silver skin off uh, because it could help in the marinated process. Um, some people like it on, but I'm just going to clean it up a little bit here for you. And it has been cleaned. The fat cap has been removed. I, I will say that, but there is uh, some more that we can do here. So what you do is you just slide your knife and go under the beef or under the skin. And you know, anything else that's kind of left here, again, it's not, uh, not that difficult to do. You know, I, I don't know why you would want to clean it up because a ribeye is a fatty cut of beef. And if you're, you're buying a ribeye, you know there's going to be some fat on it. But I understand there might be some annoying, you know, silver skin on it like this that you're never going to be able to get used to eating. Okay. All right, let's just trim that a little bit like that. So if you wanted to, to trim, you have to be careful too because if you're cooking a whole ribeye and you're not covering it, uh, what you're doing is you're taking away the protective structure of the meat. So if you were to put too much salt on this and you put it in the oven and you don't cover it, it's going to get such a hard crust you won't even be able to pierce it with a knife eventually because that's how you get a nice crust on the top of the uh, beef is with the salt. So you have to be careful with that. But we're not doing that today. We're not marinating a whole ribeye. What we're doing is cutting a piece, a couple of pieces of steak that I want to show you. So we're going to get the end cap off out of the way because I want to show you this, this is my favorite part of the ribeye here. And if you could, you turn this over, you can see that the, the bones have been removed here. So this is a boneless ribeye. But I want to show you the, the marbling in this beef here. This is some serious cut of beef. The color and the marbling, I'd say that this is probably going to be one of the best cuts of beef you're ever going to see. So if you ever want to see what a really good, expensive cut of meat is, take a look at this. Because this has definitely got everything covered. And these, these uh, marbleization here will help assist in the, um, the fat process. When the meat breaks down, it's going to give it flavor and everything else. So yeah, let's cook this one. Let's do that. All right? Let's take another one right here. I'll tell you what we're going to do with this one. Notice I have plastic wrap on here. It's just to keep it a little bit. Eater. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to pan sear this steak, right? I'm going to take a little bit of garlic, get this out of the way. I'm going to put it in the pan. I'm going to take some olive oil, and we're going to really let this heat up. 
before we put the steak in. We're going to get rid of some of that oil too. Now what we're going to do with this steak here, we're going to take our bag, we're going to put our steak in there like so. We're going to take our dry rub, put it in the bag. You've seen this before in other shows. I'm generous when it comes to my rubs, okay? And what you're going to do is just move it around. It's a lot cleaner than if you were to have this all over the place in your kitchen. Take your beef out. See how it's nice and covered completely? That's what you want. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lay this baby down in the back here. What we're going to do is spray it first. I'm spraying it with a truffle oil, black truffle oil. Give it some extra flavor. Now we're going to put the steak down. <coughs> nice. That's what I'm talking about. When you cough, you've, you've marinated it nicely. You've put a good rub. And you're going to put a little bit on top. Now if you look at this, you're going to see, now that looks like a nice juicy steak. All right? Now before I clean my hands, I don't want to touch too much because we're working with some serious bacteria here. We're going to take our tongs. We'll remove our garlic, put our oil into here, put our garlic back. We're going to get our pot super, 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 super hot. But before we do that, we're going to take this cut of beef here. Now listen, if it ain't messy, it ain't right, okay? So, and what we're going to do is take some salt. a little pepper. I only like to pepper one side. Now we're going to put this baby in. That's what you want. Move it around the pan a little bit because you got a cold piece of beef. You don't want it to stick. See, when you can move the pan away like that, you're going to get a really good crust on there. And it's not going to stick to the pan. That's why I said make sure the pan is really hot. We got a mess here. Let's clean up. When I come back, we'll talk about the next phase of this beef. But uh, even before we leave you, I want to lift this up again and give, give you a, a good shot. The nice marbling that's in here, man. This is really a nice cut of beef. And you could do a lot with this. You could stew it if you wanted to. I mean, it's a fatty cut of beef. It's best just seared in the pan rare. That's how I like to do it. Or on the grill. Both of our steaks are going to be accompanied with this incredible uh, tomato popcorn mix that we're going to do. So let's get this mess cleaned up. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to continue to cook on Taste This. All right, now we're back to our smoky pit here where we got two steaks going on. We're going to turn this one over. This one was in the pan. Look at that. That's great, great flavor there. We got our garlic. That's exactly what we're looking for. Just got a couple of minutes. We obviously want this rare. We got in the back here, we're going to turn our steak over, the one we put the rub in the bag. Nice. All right, put our steak on there. That's some nice lines on there, my friends. Now we're going to take our steak off here. Right, what we're going to do is, I want to keep some of the flavor in here. I'm going to show you something here. We're going to return our, our, our pan back there. We get some microgreens that we're going to garnish uh, with everything later. A couple of things I wanted to show you. These are like mini turnips, baby turnips. Uh, and they're good on a steak to... Or in this case, a tomato salad. You got baby carrots, stuff like that. They're small, they're crunchy, they're not like annoying where they're too big. Um, this is what's called an ice plant, which goes really good with steak. As you can see, it kind of looks like there's ice on it. Weird stuff they're uh, they're doing. And I wanted to show you something too. You you went to the store and you get parsley all the time, right? But you're probably figuring that it's a plant. But this is how it looks when it's pulled out of the ground. Uh, this is the root down at the bottom. And the parsley leaves on top are what you get at the store. So you go to the store and you buy flat parsley, you're getting this. Wrapped up in a bunch, all nice and green, ready to go. But it really comes from this. So I just wanted to show you that. All right. Now take this microgreens. We're going to put it aside. Now we have our, our flame over here. We're going to start with our next dish. And that's called kind of an heirloom goat cheese uh, tomato salad here. I'm going to get this too high. 
And it starts off with a little bit of onions. So we're going to take some onions here. Want to caramelize some onions. And the caramelization process with onions, uh, it's quite simple. If the, if the onions get caramelized, you're going to get a really good quality dish because it's going to get let out the sweet flavor of the onions. I'm going to cool this down a little bit. This pan's a little hot. Whenever you have a pan that's been sitting on the flame right now, you're not going to use it right away. Just go and cool it down. It's a good quality pot. It's not going to crack on you. All right, now we got our onions. And we're just going to do a simple half moon, julienne, whatever you want to call. Put it in the pan. Like that. We're going to let that cook down until it gets brown. Now we're going to take our garlic. Take it out of the shell. Of course, anytime we want to deshell a garlic, what do we do? We smash down the garlic and it comes right up. But that's not going to be enough in this case to really get the flavor. So what you're going to do is take your knife, cut it in half, and then put that down. Okay. Take a little bit of oil. Put that in the pan. What we have is a real strong onion here. I can tell you that right now, folks. Now, our steak is in the back. What we're going to do is take our cheese that we talked about. This is a really good quality, thinly shaved Swiss cheese, and it's going to sit right on the top of this steak. And it's, it's really shaved down nice and thin and airy so that we are able to push the cheese down and mold it on the steak. We don't want uh, a thick uh, cheese that we have to kind of just put on the steak. It falls off. You see, I'm able to control where I want the cheese on the steak. This is a mid-rare. All right, good. Now, we're coming over, we look at our onions here. We have to cook these onions down so that they get brown. Um, when the onions start to cook, you've added some oil, they'll, they, will ha they won't have any more of those gases that, that irritate your eyes. So now you're in the safe zone. So you can go talk all over it and your eyes won't get teary and everything else. Put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. You notice I don't, I'm not too big on just grabbing the salt in a shaker. I, I, I like to crack it myself, put it in a mill. You get so much better flavor. This is actually Himalayan rock salt. There's like a million different salts out there. But there really is different tastes in salt that could really help in your dishes. And I think that's important. A lot of people don't know that. They just think that salt is salt, but that's not the case. Different salts can really improve and enhance different dishes, and it's important. So we got our, uh, our onions. Let's move it up. Turn on the heat. We're going to take this goat cheese. When these onions caramelize, then what we're going to do is mold in the goat cheese, and it's going to go great with uh, our little tomato salad that we got going on here. But we can't do that until this gets nice and brown first. What we're going to do is we're going to flash cook these tomatoes. What does that mean? Well, it means that I have some herb oil here, if you can see it. Got the, let me stir it up. There you go. You see your rosemary, your thyme your oregano. That's my little herb oil that I make here. I bring everything to just a little bit of a simmer. I cut it and then the flavors get released. I never overboil the, the oil because then you're going to lose the herbs. But you can see how that beautiful color in there. Um, and I started off with just a regular canola oil with this too. It's got a high cooking point. I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. Put a little bit in there too. Now we're going to take our tomatoes. You don't need all of them. We're going to put a few. Now, I've done a little bit something different than most people do. Most of the people cut them and they serve them cold. What I want to do is serve this warm. So I'm going to take a nice plate here. And what I'm going to do is just lightly cook down these tomatoes, nothing crazy, because I want them warm. I want the skin to be loose. I don't want them to be broken, but I want them to the point that when we're ready to eat them, we get that flavor. And you get that by just kind of tossing around the tomatoes. Okay? Now these onions are looking good. Tomatoes are looking real good too. What we're going to do is start to assemble this.
Wow, nice. Got a little way to go here. Not much. Can help this with a little bit of oil. These are almost ready to go. We just want these lightly toasted. You see the flavor, the color on this? Okay. Now, these, uh, these tomatoes are ready to go. Uh, I don't want to cook them too much longer on the flame because what will happen is they'll break up. And that's not what I want. I want a toasted tomato. What I'm doing is cooking the outside so much that the middle is just ready to pop. As soon as you put one of these, as you can see this, you see this right here? It's ready to go. It's not going to release any of the flavors yet. It's going to get nice and warm. And that's why I want to leave it. I want to leave it there. Now these onions, on the other hand, are ready to go. What I'm going to do is put some goat cheese in here. I'm going to shut the fire down because you don't want to burn the goat cheese. It, it will separate on you. Put our tomatoes on this so it stops cooking. And what we're going to do is mash up our onions. Now, onions and goat cheese talk about a marriage in heaven. And you want to probably put about five ounces of goat cheese to these onions. And everything will sort of come together here. And these onions are going to be the bed for our tomatoes. Ooh, God, this looks good, good. All right. Next, our tomatoes, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to show you one so you, so you kind of get the feel for it here. Watch. See what I'm talking about? I had to do that just to show you that these are ready to pop. So the minute you put them in your mouth, take one bite, we're ready to go. Okay, now take the rest of our tomatoes, put them on this dish. And this is like a warm tomato salad, you know, that we've really helped get the flavor out. Like if you get one of these heirloom tomatoes, one of the reasons why I did this because these heirloom tomatoes came in, they're out of season. And they're hard. So rather than let them sit in vinegar for three days to kind of get, you know, a little soft, uh, it's just going to take away from their flavor, I lightly saute them. All right. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is take some of these orange segments. The orange segments are really going to balance out this dish here. You have your orange, you have your tomatoes, a little bit of dried blueberries. Okay. Next, we're going to do something that many people don't do. We we'll take a little bit of popcorn. And I have some truffle oil spray. Wow, if you love truffle oil, this is where it's at. Put a little bit of popcorn in there like so. And I'm going to take some greens, some microgreens. I'm going to put them in the truffle oil and go right on top. So you're going to get flavor of all the truffle oil. Because you never want to put greens, just plain greens, on top of a salad, unseasoned. Not really the way to go. Now, what we'll do with this, you know, leave a couple of, you know, I always like a, a couple around the, the plate. We're going to take this oil, this herb oil that we made, we're going to put it right, right around the side of the plate. There you go. That's our first dish. Combination of goat cheese, tomatoes. Fabulous looking color, really good flavors. That's what we want. Let me go grab a steak. We're going to cut it and we're going to wrap up today's show, so don't go anywhere. So now we get to the point where uh, we made our salad here. Um, and the flavors are right there. Every, all the flavors. The caramelized onions are there with the goat cheese, the uh, citric acid from the, uh, from the, the oranges, and the, and the acidicness from the tomatoes. Um, and one of the reasons why we did that whole tomato thing with the sautéing is because our tomatoes were a bit hard. 
Um, and you're going to find that. You're going to go into a supermarket and you're not going to get the ripest tomatoes uh, in different times of the year. And you have to know how to get around that stuff. Um, you know, cutting into a hard tomato and leaving it in vinegar and hoping that it's going to get soft is just a prayer that's not going to come true. So this is, this is probably your best method. So we got our seared steak here. We did it in the pan. And I could smell the incredible aroma of garlic because we had the garlic in the pan. Uh, we also have our steak back there, which is with the cheese, which we're going to cut up now. And this has got that really, really good quality uh, Swiss cheese that I talked about, too. And what we're going to do is cut this ribeye. And we're at a perfect mid-rare, as you can see kind of get close to that. And that's where you want to be with a ribeye. Definitely want to be a, a, a mid-rare. The only time I would eat a steak or ribeye uh, well is if it was an end cut uh, and, you know, it, it was really cooked really well in a prime rib. Let's take this steak. Put it right here. And what we're going to do is take a little bit of our onions and put them on the top with goat cheese added, added texture. You can see this goat cheese looking real low, low. Now what we can do is garnish that up a bit. We could use garlic leaves. It's amazing what they're doing now. We could put these garlic leaves on top, uh, and then we're ready to go. Maybe take a little bit of parsley. And again, you never want to put undressed greens. If even if you wanted to just take your truffle oil and give it a little dab on top, good, ready to go. So there you have it. So just to recap, we got three different kinds of steaks in there. Um, something inventive that we did with the popcorn is we took it and we put it in the truffle oil and we put it in that uh, in the tomatoes. There we use cousin Willie's popcorn, and then we have our seared steak here. So that'll about wrap it up for our three steaks. Now keep in mind. Cheese on a steak is really good. Um, you can get creative with it. I mean, on past shows we talked about, and we've, we've even done uh, gorgonzola cheese, combinzola cheese, regular blue cheese, you've done buttermilk blue uh, cheese as well. Uh, any kind of blue cheese will be really good in this dish. A good Swiss cheese is excellent. Uh, even goat cheese. You can even mess around with a lot of goat cheese. And I just think that the flavor of the cheese compared to really where you get to be, like there's a difference, like, you know, a lot of this cattle's fed stuff you and I don't even want to talk about right now. But if the cattle's fed, you know, grass and, and it's fed what it's supposed to be eating and it's raised on good ground and you give it a good quality cheese, you will taste that flavor of the pastures in the meat. So, and, and, and a lot of times we go to the supermarket, we get this meat. It's not even raised in this country. It's horrible. It's pumped up with more steroids and, 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 and hormones than you could imagine. Uh, and we take it home, we think we're eating a good steak. We're eating like a big lump of chemicals is what we're eating. So if you can get some organic beef, do it. It's going to be a little bit more money. You know what I tell people? You put better quality uh, product into your system, it'll be less money you have to spend at the doctors 20 or 30 years from now. And that's, that's definitely the truth. So thank you for watching this fun-filled episode of Taste This TV. I'm your host, Chef Joe Simonero. Remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this.